Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the workbench. Um, so we just got over the long and extensive build on the Runaway Train GP40-2 and in that time process I've had a lot of uh, other projects kind of pile up and I've been kind of saving a lot of other videos up to this point. So I want to start posting some more, uh, just small how-tos, uh, quick tip videos and stuff like that. Um, and then I got a couple more uh, update videos coming, obviously, to show more stuff that I've been working on so you guys are up to date. Anyway, this first video coming out here uh, is, a, is something I want to go ahead and get out of the way now while I still am uh, on the subject and while I have a model to work on. Um, I got a couple more gondolas I'll do this technique to, but they're pretty extensive builds, so I got, I'm going to save them till later, like midsummer or something like that later on when I have a little more time. Anyway, I want to talk about gondola dents, uh, and this is a common subject in the uh, community of the... Uh, Model Road Hobbyist. It's a hard thing to model. There's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, people can put bare metal foil on the sides, cut it out, and put dents in it. That's one way of doing it, but then you have to custom paint your model. So if you're going to do custom painting and anything like that, yeah, it is a good technique for that. But in this case, with an already pre-painted model, uh, you can't really just do that and then obviously save the paint because you have bare metal foil everywhere. So we're not going to be talking about this technique. We're going to be basically talking about the technique most people are going to be wanting to know how to do anyway, which is how to dent the sides of a stock gondola like this. Uh, and it's it's a very tough thing to do just right. Uh, I've seen people do it and it doesn't look right. Uh, and it's, it's really hard to mess up or really hard to um, uh, get right is what I meant to say. Um, but I'm going to try to show you guys how I do this exactly. Uh, I use a propane torch, and yes, I know people are going to be screaming at me, no, don't use propane, it's too hot. Well, I understand that, but that's what I have. I'm not going to run out to the store and buy a butane torch. However, if you have a butane torch, you do have a little bit of a lower heat uh, with that, and you have a little bit more time to work with it, which is better. So I'd recommend if, if you're going to go out and get a torch to do this, get a butane torch. But I have a... Um, I have a propane torch, this is what I'm going to be using for this. Anyway, enough blabbering here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the model in another room where I can take the torch and I'll basically show you guys how I do the dents on the sides first and then how we'll go back and add all the gouges and scratches afterwards. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is take off some of these smaller details like these stirrups. Any small plastic parts on a model like this, if they're going to be around heat, they can potentially melt. So fine details like these grabs and everything, you'll want to go ahead and just carefully take these off. This is very important because you could possibly melt these if you're not careful. I've done a couple models where I've accidentally done that, some I've gotten away with it, but it's just important to take that into account if you're going to work with a model with a lot of fine separately applied details like this, especially if they're plastic. Brass you don't have to worry about so much, but plastic parts you want to go ahead and get off now. Uh, so I'm going to do that real quick and we'll get... So I think this is going to be the best shot I'm going to be able to get here. Um, just a word of caution too, you know, obviously, if you have a model you can practice on, I recommend you use a practice model first. Uh, this is, a, you know, a $30 model. It's in a pretty hard to find paint scheme too, so I don't necessarily want to just to ruin this thing. Uh, I have ruined a couple models before in practice, which was a mistake. Um, but it's just a word of caution, you know, if you're going to do this, practice first. Uh, I've done this a couple times, so I'm fairly confident uh, what I'm using. I have a metal weight here, and I'm going to basically isolate and use it as a heat block just for this first section. Only work in small sections at a time with this uh, and it will heat up quickly so you gotta work fast. So I have my propane torch here, I have the nozzle attachment here. And basically what I'm gonna do we'll get a little gas flow here. I'm gonna try to bring this to the lowest setting I can here, right? So it's very, very even a little lower maybe. And I think it's about as good as we're going to get it right there, folks. All right. So what I'm going to use to bulge the panels, this, uh, the butt end of a small X-Acto knife blade. I'm going to use this to bend it in. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started here. I'll start in this corner. You're going to heat it up just a little bit, kill it, and then quickly go in and press them out. You guys see that? Very, very quickly it does this. And it'll start to bulge out. But you got it, you saw how fast that went, how quickly it started to bend. So you guys can kind of see that. That's actually a little too extreme, but I can flatten that back out and you can see it's still pretty warm. So this is why you gotta work fast. You gotta be very quick at this. So I'll demonstrate it again here real quick.
Come on now. I haven't used this torch in a while. It's survived the winter, so it's a bit, a bit on the rusty side there. All right. And just real carefully go back in, hit that spot. Try to keep your dents sort of at the base of the floor as well. They're not going to be so much at the top. It's going to be really at the base of the car, so the floor of the car. So what you're aiming for is to get the dents right at the base. Right where this, uh, the sides meet the floor on the model is where you're going to see those dents from the effects of gravity, basically. And that's where you're going to want to be concentrating these dents. So try to you know keep that in mind as you're doing this. And don't press too hard. You don't want to make these extreme just enough where you see you know the dents in the side there so I'm gonna keep doing this process we'll make it look a little better in a second I'll... so the first method I showed you is using the butt end of an exacto like this uh, the other one you can use if you have it is a dental pick uh, and this is really good for modeling actually uh, the little pokes and stuff and licks and stuff that you see in the dents where it's not one solid dent um, and I'll show you this method here real quick for the other side here just like before low setting on the torch we'll get in here get up a small section that's good and then I'm going to basically come in here poke this out a little bit with this and then I'll go back and add some little bends as it starts to set up here I'll just start kind of I'm purposely poking through like that and then what you get is these really rough looking dents like this so that's another way you can do it it looks pretty good and I'll demonstrate it again but like I said um, once you really get a feel for how this works you can move pretty fast like I've already done this whole thing basically in about 10 minutes which is not too shabby Again, just force the dents out first, and then come back and just poke them out a little bit further while the plastic is still dry. And just remove those little dents in. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the stock dents here. You guys can see these, the bulges in the panels. Went pretty extreme on this corner, but like I said, we'll correct all this in a second. Uh, I didn't go crazy on the ends, just a little bit of warping, but not too much. Some of them have extreme uh, dents and stuff on the ends, but I didn't go too crazy. But on this side, you can see the pokes and everything through it. You guys can see that. So now what I'm going to do is basically create the scratches and gouges in the sides that you see from the stress on the panels uh, to amplify these effects. So now with the model back at the workbench, you, again you can see with the lighting you can see those panel effects amplified here. And notice we haven't affected this top cord here. This is still perfectly straight and smooth. This is what you see a lot of people do when they melt the sides of the cars. They end up warping this severely. And a car with a very badly warped top cord like this will usually not be in service very long. If it's that bad, the car is not going to be allowed for service it's because of the amount of damage. Uh, what you see is the bulge panel so much. And you can see we've been able to, even though we've used sort of a, a rough method of heat, we've been able to preserve that top cord and keep the gondola in straight, uh, pretty straight. It is a little bit warped in the center, which is the benefit of this heat treatment. You can kind of warp the interior, which you do see the interior will sag over time. So that's another cool little effect. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it actually is bowed in the center, which is pretty sweet. Anyway, what we're going to do now with these panel effects is amplify them. Remember our dental pick? Yeah, this guy. Now it's time to attack these on the other side. And basically what I'm going to do is scratch them and gouge them with this pick uh, on this picked in which I basically carved out to a fine point. Uh, you could use an X-Acto blade too, however you're just going to be destroying your X-Acto blade and these things are expensive, I don't really want to do that. So I bought a dedicated tool just for this uh, particular effect. So you get a good grip on the tool and you basically start putting random little scratches and gouges around the panel. Keep these random though. Make sure to keep these random. You want them to be uh, 
you know, not all perfect and uniform, no dent on any real car is going to be perfect. It's going to be random. So, just take your time with this. Get in there and really just let it have it, you know. I'm not worried about these reporting marks or anything like that either. I will go back and re-decal this car. I plan on making a patch out. However, if you want to be a little bit more careful with your numbers and preserve those a little bit better, you can uh, be a little bit more careful. As you can see, I didn't take any caution when gouging up the lettering, but that, again, is because um, I'm going to re-decal this car. But basically, we're going to see the majority of these scratches and dents is around the base of the, the bulge on the panel, and then you'll have all these surrounding little gouges kind of around it. It's kind of random, but you can see I'm just going all over the place here. Doing this effect. And I'm going to do this for the entire car. So, as you can see, what you end up with, if I can get the lighting right, it's been a little while so the sun's kind of gone down now, so it's harder to get a shot of this. There you go. But you can see with the gouges and everything, and then the bulges and everything in the sides, you can see those effects are kind of enhanced now. And so basically what I would do at this point, um, I would not clear coat over this, I would leave it like it is. And at this point it would be a good time for you to go ahead and begin overlaying washes into these. So I would take like a dark grimy wash, put that over this first, and essentially what I would do after that, I would then take um, some oil paints, shocks and everything else, uh, and then basically start enhancing these gouges and stuff by putting uh, the little streaks and such into them. Uh, for an example here, I'll grab one gondola I've done with this effect as well, so you guys can kind of see. Um, this is one I did a while back, and this is done with the same method, but you guys can kind of see those darker rust-colored tones and the bulges in the panels. That's done with the oil paints to represent the uh, dark pitted rust that's on this on these cars after they've uh, kind of rusted a little bit in those gouges and everything, collect all the grime, they start to rust quite a bit. Uh, so that's something you'll also really want to focus on with this. After that, of course, you can clear coat over your work and then overlay graffiti, some patching, and other kinds of weathering effects into this. You can even put some chalk powders and stuff and rub it into these, and again, that'll look really, really nice. I've done the, that method before. But essentially, that's how you do the gondola scratches and gouges to answer everyone's questions here. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions about that, actually, and I had one recently on a video I posted where I, I think I showed some gons in a video, and someone asked. So, that's basically how I do it. Um, if I ever get a car, I have time to actually weather in full here. Uh, I'll try to make, like, a, a full-length video, weathering video series on just weathering a gondola like this. I, um, I think it'd be a good idea, but this one I'll probably be working on for a couple, couple weeks or so. Um since I gotta work on other things now. This is just something I wanted to get started, uh, but you guys can keep an eye out for this car later on too. I'll post some pictures on Instagram and Facebook as well, but that'll pretty much wrap up this video for now, guys. Hope you liked it. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe and continue to follow my work. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Cool Hand Dan is my Instagram, that's all lowercase. And then my Dan's, uh, my Dan's Custom Trains page is on Facebook. Um, you can look me up there and follow my work as well. So, until next time,